What's going on fellas? Doing another video for Jonas here. We have reconfigured the combustion chamber with a top discharge in order to migrate the flame and the heat into the preheat zone of this combustor. Turns out it's working out great. We've got a lot of top heat now and the combustion stability and the completion of combustion is almost 100% I would say running at this rate anyway. So definitely a good place to hook up a superheat. The performance of this thing is just phenomenal. I mean we're getting blue flame. You can't see it in the camera very well because it's washing out. But it has definitely all the colors you want to see. So just by preheating the air we're getting this. See how the top of the combustor is red hot now? That's how you get that blue flame and that complete combustion. All the pyrolysis gases are being burned because we've caused the flame to migrate up to the top. That thing is just blazing red hot. We're in the 1500 degree zone in some of the hottest portions of this thing. The camera does exaggerate the temperature, so don't try to gauge temperature based on the video. It's actually in the 1500 degree range. The performance is insane with that top preheat. We're preheating that air to about 900 degrees before it even gets to the pyrolysis gases. We're not really going to pay too much attention to the wattage right now because the way we're ducted is just totally inefficient. But it would be nice to see the increase in performance later on down the line. So I went ahead and took a quick snip bit of that. There you see our 1,020 degrees. Anytime the decimal point disappears on this gun, that's when we're in the thousands. We're at 1,048 there. 1,600, 1,700 degrees there. I'm sorry, I was wrong. It is over 1,500 degrees. So that's really good for a wood fire for sure. Uh, waste oil flame struggles to hit 1,800 degrees. So that's not bad. Your average propane torch you're going to see in the 1,900 to maybe 2,000 but you'll never get over 2,000 degrees with a propane torch. The performance of this thing is definitely incredible. I mean, after you get it running for a while, we are glowing pretty hot there. The flame is just nuts. I know we don't want to run it this high, but I just wanted to take a look at it while we got it up and running. The discharge is too small, obviously, so now we know when we go to build the actual boiler that the discharge needs to be at least twice that size in order to get away with all that feedback we're seeing. It resonates back into the hopper there. Typically that hopper is at a vacuum, and the reason why I say it resonates is because you can actually see the dust change in direction at like 60 cycles to 100 cycles a second. It's nuts. So, we're definitely going to want to um, increase the discharge diameter. I'm going to do it by two. I think that would be a good size, twice that size. Now, maybe once it gets on down the line, it can restrict a little bit. We can always add coil to the discharge. So, if we decide we're not salvaging enough heat out of the process, we can just do that. Man, look at that flame. That is just incredible. Now this is um, all attributed to the way we've caused that flame to migrate up towards the preheat zone. Before, we had zero preheat whatsoever on that incoming air. The top of that canister was in the low 200 degrees. You could almost touch it. And you look at it now, you know that air is getting a yeah, thousand degrees easy. I'm talking Fahrenheit here guys, I apologize for uh, any of you metric people. I typically use metric only when I'm doing equations. I can't stand the empirical. I don't like uh, imperial, whatever it's called, standard. I prefer metrics and math for sure, especially in kinematics. So yeah, man, this thing is just rocking. I think we're set. This is definitely a good size. We can burn wood pellets at a ferocious rate if we need to. I know you only wanted um, 11 kilowatts worth of steam, but boilers are often incredibly inefficient on a small scale. So we want to be sure we've got all the power you need during experimentation. I think that it would be wise to go that route. Of course, we'd never have to run it at this rate, but you never know. 
I mean, the temperatures you're wanting are pretty high. 500 degrees steam at uh, 250 PSI, I think it was, maybe. I'll have to check those specs again. I don't have them sitting here right with me, but I think this thing's going to do it. And as I said, we can always increase the coil on the discharge as we need to. I'm just I'm amazed at the increased performance of that of just changing that up. The reason why it was sticking out the side initially is because I've seen a lot of videos of guys doing that where the discharge is sticking out the front. So I thought I'd just give it a shot and see what it's all about. Well, there's really nothing good about it at all. It turns out they just haven't evolved yet to the top discharge. I used to do this like five, six years ago. I used to build these things to burn leaves and wood and books and stuff like that. Had a big pile of books I had to burn. Usually you can't throw a pile of books in a, a fire and burn them. These were like the types of books you didn't want to save. Trust me, they were of no value some of them were like uh, the types of books women would read if you catch my drift like porn novels and stuff so I burn all this stuff and uh, it, it would completely burn the book you can burn anything in a cyclone combustion system this is also a great incinerator design if you ever want to build an incinerator they can burn literally anything even ash this thing will burn the ash of the fire and vitrify it into glass. It's incredible. It sprays a lot of ash out, of course, as you can see. I'm just doing this because I'm starving to death and I'm ready to get the test over. And this thing will literally burn for an hour if we don't just flush it out now. Plus, it's nice to see what a good charcoal fire can do. All the pyrolysis gases have been pyrolyzed out of the wood at this point. This is pure charcoal fire right here which is also capable of an extreme amount of heat as you can see so I'm about done babbling for now I think I've said about everything I need to say I think uh, we're ready to look at designing the actual boiler off the information we've gained from this video